Welcome to the Right to Reason podcast. I'm your host, Robert Stanley. Is morality subjective or objective? A recent debate on the Christian channel, The Gospel Truth, motivated two atheist philosophers to challenge me on my philosophy of ethics. I'll post the polite and cordial debate between myself and Eric Hernandez very soon, but in the interim, when atheists debate, the gloves come off. Two unapologetic atheist philosophers versus your humble host. Here it is. It's the Right to Reason podcast. It's like it's like you fucking atheists piss me off more than the religious people. If I say what you're doing is wrong, what I'm saying is that it is the wrong way to promote human flourishing. And That's objective morality. You know, if somebody uh, says I'm, like, I'm losing my goddamn mind, about, Shane. If you knew the facts about the world that I know. You would understand that what I'm saying is the better way to achieve the goal that we share. You That's will be what I'm saying, here, Robert. If you just if you just admit that you assume that you have to survive, you're just calling no, but, it like we all agree it's subjective. That's objective. No, it's not, Robert. No, it's not. The deepest, most important part about the discussion of morality is what am i going to do and that's that's a subjective thing josh and, and I, josh I just think is it your opinion is wrong that, or is it wrong i feel both I, and that right and i do too no x doesn't promote the most flourishing what's that what the fuck is that that's subjective morality no that's subjective morality flourishing what's that thing they were it was objectively wrong in respect to their subjective goal boom and this episode of the Right to Reason podcast is brought to you by our patrons and contributors like me. We have all recognized the value of the unrestrained marketplace of ideas and have decided to make a difference. You can make a difference too. Contribute at patreon.com forward slash right and learn more about your right to reason at the right to reason.com. Your activism is appreciated. Today we're talking to Shane Isgrig. And Joshua Richards, gentlemen, I'm so happy to be talking to you. Happy to be Very here. glad to be here, man. You can find Shane at Shane the Skeptic. That's on YouTube, uh, or is that on YouTube as well as a lot of other RSS feeds? YouTube and Facebook. I have a page okay. on Facebook and a YouTube channel. And Josh Richards, uh, you, you've got a, I want to say it's a new new venture you're doing, but you've been doing it for a while. You do a lot of uh, website management. Uh, is that something that people could uh, reach out to you for? Maybe maybe use your yeah. services if, if they're, they're needing that? Absolutely. Uh, and super quick, I do website building, website management. Uh, if you need a coder or a programmer, I have a couple of gents I do work with. And uh, we would love to do any work that you have. Uh, you can find me on Facebook. We're currently trying to get an LLC uh, and name going. The first name didn't take. But anyway, you can find me on Facebook or Joshua Ryan Richards on you can do that at gmail.com or just put that into Google, and I'm sure you'll find me. Great picture of me and my wife on Facebook. Uh, I'm done pitching that. Thank you. <laughs> I just Googled nerd, and it showed your picture. But I paid extra for that. <laughs> That's not even an insult anymore. Like Nerd's like a cool thing nowadays. Like yeah, When we were awesome. kids, it was an insult. Yeah, I feel like in the past five to ten years, nerd became used a little bit more... In a positive sense. Like, yeah. You know, I think it was just people embracing it going like, I'm going to be a nerd. Like, I do that, you know. I call myself like a philosophy nerd. But then whenever people want to play, you know, games that to me are just not of my interest, I'm like, yeah, I'm not into this nerdy shit. Well, it's philosophy that I wanted to talk to you guys about today. Uh, and just before I do that, you can find Shane the Skeptic's links and you can find Josh's Facebook links in the show notes. Gentlemen, I believe in objective morality. You guys both believe in, or you, you would say objective morality doesn't even exist. It's like as if I just said, I believe in God, and you're atheist, right? Sort of. In a sense, yeah. You, If you think uh, that morality is this ontologically existing thing, then uh, similar, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking it's just semantics. Let me, let me just throw out what I think, and then you guys pounce on it like a couple of hungry, evil wolves, okay? Okay. I, I see morality existing in many, many different ways. Uh, same as truth might exist in many different ways, right? So if uh, <laughs> I feel like Obi Wan Kenobi, you know, a certain kind of truth. What, what did he say? A certain kind of truth. A certain a, a, a certain point of view. Remember that one? Anyway, but I'm not uh, a Star Wars nerd. 
Okay, not that kind of nerd. Uh, so yeah. I see I see morality. It can exist through evolution. It can exist neurologically, you know, mirror neurons. It can exist in some kind of subjective way where, like, I might think one way, you might think another way. Um, then Josh thinks another way, Shane. I also see it in the objective sense of the three of us might all agree that kicking a kitten in the face isn't good, although hilarious. It's not good to do. Not and, hilarious. Okay, well, there we go. We have a disagreement subjectively. I don't know what will. I, yeah. I, <laughs> do you spray them with water? Can you at least spray them with water? I don't even do that. I have two Maine Coon cats, and they are... These are exceptionally well-behaved cats to begin with. So uh, I, I don't think there's anything morally wrong with spraying a kitten in the face. <laughs> um, I know they don't like it, and I know it doesn't uh, help changed the behavior of my cats oh, really? so i gave up on that i dunked that little piece of shit in a bucket of water so i quit <laughs> moving and then i pick it up and i look at it right in his eyes and say who's the boss now bitch that's what i would do but maybe that's that's my subjective morality i don't know it just it sounds like you're more of a cat person than a dog person <laughs> <for sure. laughs> or vice versa yeah so, but um... But then, but then I also I think like uh, okay, so there's objective where we would all say we shouldn't we shouldn't actually do what I just suggested. Uh, uh, but I would say that's objective because it's not based on just one mind; it's based on all of our minds, and there is uh, something that we all agree on, right? But then you face the whole analogy of well, what if the Nazis took over and we're all Nazis? Would we all be wrong? But yes, there there is an objective truth uh, about what is best for human flourishing or limiting suffering, unnecessary suffering, if I can add to that. And, and many other utilitarian kinds of concepts, like the okay, Rawls Robert. veil of ignorance. For you're jumping at the bit. You won't even let me finish. <laughs> Go ahead, hit, hit me. Hit. Not, you've already because, given us. Like, well, yeah, you're you're already go, you're already. There, there's there's I'm so gish galloping. much in what you've already said. So go ahead. Okay. Sorry, you've already just got me. So uh, you already got a lot. <laughs> That's my job. I'm actually aroused here, but let's. Uh, <laughs> uh, I can pack it in and let and let let our kind host finish his thought. I'm sorry. No, no, I was just kidding. Around. I, I did gish gallop a little. I'm just I'm throwing out all the the way that I see it, and and I did ask you guys to jump on it. So please well, please feel free. Okay. Just to to wrap up the objective thing, I would say there's another one after that where I would say there is a truth. As to whether or not that was what was best, we might not be able to access it, but I, I think we get a little bit closer to it as we go. And then the the final one would be the objective morality that like religious people hold to, which means you know there has to be a god to define it. I I don't go that far, so I might go like three, but not four. But anyway, I'm I'm, I'm done. Okay, so I'd like to just uh, offer kind of a thought because I suspect strongly what's going on between at least the difference in our two views. And from what I've heard Shane say, uh, he's obviously, I think we're kind of in the same ballpark. I, I think we're really just using language differently. But okay, okay. Uh, you started saying, well, of course, there's an element of, you know, there's like this common sense and the Thomas Paine kind of uh, sure. view that we're all sharing. Yeah, it's Rhonda. To to kick the kitten or hurt somebody uh, or rape. Let's just let's just let's just stick with something like rape Rapes, or murder. Yeah, you know, rape's a great Something one. that is pretty widely uh, hated. Yeah. It, um, it has it has so many. It, it's perfect because the the subject is the victim, so you can always use their subjective morality toward the rapist's subjective morality. So it, it works really well in that regard. Yeah, well, and that's kind of where I where I, I would camp out. But I was just gonna say, like, one of the things, like, what makes this so broad, and I obviously want to let Shane talk, so I'll try and be succinct here, uh, is I honestly think that when we reflect upon what we believe, uh, you know, that kind of inner monologue, refining your own thoughts over time, uh, I think that is a subjective experience. I think morality. The process of you know your brain is recording and projecting reality, and you have these lived experiences. I think as you become wiser, uh, you obviously gain more in, gain more insight. I, I think when we think about what's right and wrong, that's just a subjective process, and I think that gets taken to an even more complicated subjective process when a bunch of other people in communities through time begin to uh, sketch out their broad. Uh, morals. So I think all of that is, you know, just linguistically speaking, a subjective process. And I think I heard Shane say this, but yeah, like uh, the number two doesn't exist the way like I exist or the way like this computer I'm using exists. Uh, but the idea exists. I think morals uh, don't have an ontology uh, that is like uh, that exists the way we do. I think we have to do some serious reflection to get there. And I just think that it doesn't exist independent of us it's something humans are doing 
And um, I, I guess that's a good place to just shut up. I, I had a thought about Plato, but we can wait a little bit. In regard to uh, numbers being, you know, mathematical concepts, I would say that in terms of mathematics, like, sure, we experience it subjectively, but I wouldn't really call math subjective because at least what it is we're Neither talking would about I. is something that would exist objectively. So I'm glad I'm glad we agree there. So the okay. reason for me uh, why morality needs to be subjective is because it's not just the experience of it that's dependent on minds, but actually the variables of it as well. And so um, what I mean by that is, so, Robert, are, are you in agreement with me on the... Uh, the observation about is and ought divided by uh, by David Hume, you know, essentially just that I, you cannot get an is statement from an ought statement or vice versa. I agree, but with the caveat that the is produced from science is able to be perceived as an ought because of philosophy. Well, right. But so here's here's the thing. I, I think that we have to make just like in any you know, study, we have to make some number of assumptions to just to get our feet off the ground. Like, you know, we have to assume logic and reason work mm -hmm. to even have a conversation that yeah. words have some kind of meaning. But when it comes to morality, we operate with this extra assumption, uh, more than one of them, actually. So mm -hmm. first, the assumption that we ought to survive. It, it is an axiomatic fact that we experience this subjective desire to, desi to survive, um, as well as promote the flourishing of others as a social species and i think you you talked about this in your recent debate as a social species we've been we have evolved in such a way that we derive pleasure from promoting flourishing from other people so we have this subjective starting point ought to survive ought to promote flourishing of others and then you know with with suffering and and uh the minimization of health being you know objectively the wrong way to promote suffering uh, to promote pleasure i would say that if you were to do something like rape someone we're able to call that wrong because that is objectively the wrong way to achieve our subjective goal of promoting human flourishing so i i would agree that there's objective reality involved in this i'm not denying that for one second but we have a subjective starting point do you see where i'm at there uh yeah but you kind of just blew my mind for a second so are you saying that you do believe in objective morality then? That it no, I, I don't. Because you, I mean, you just why. said that, though. Because I, I understand that it could, it could confuse people. You cannot prove that we ought to survive. Like, sure, we feel that way. Sure, we, we are just like one of our genetic biological variables about us is that we have this instilled uh, desire that we ought to survive. But what I'm saying and the reason you can't say it's objective is you can't demonstrate that it's a fact that I ought to survive or that we ought to promote flourishing. Like, I ought to survive is not as true as 2 plus 2 equals 4 is true. Well, it, it simply isn't. Right. Now, but, but you, you started this by saying we have to have certain cer certain things that you would presuppose, right? Pre presuppositions. And, and I think presupposing that if we're discussing morality, we're talking about that which is good and bad for conscious beings that which is and by good and bad obviously does it make you happy or sad does it hurt or help does it lead to a longer more fulfilled life or not if you're just talking well, about good and bad in some kind of ethereal sense well you're on the side of the the religious people you're, i mean you're, you're, you're talking in, about something that doesn't exist at all there is no like cosmic good or bad i could go and club a baby in its face until it turns into spaghetti right, sauce, and, universe, and it wouldn't be bad like, there's to the universe. There's no descriptive fact right. that says that that's wrong. Yeah, yeah, we would agree now, in that sense. But it is objectively but, the case that that is the wrong way to decrease suffering. It, it is an objective fact that that clubbing a baby in the face causes that baby to suffer. <laughs> Such a and horrible it example. Its health and flourishing. Right. So, um, in regard to the assumption, I think. Yes, we're operating with this assumption, but you know the, and I've talked about this recently, but you know uh, Descartes' analogy of bad ideas being like bad apples, how one bad idea seems to spoil the rest of the, the basket, hmm. or one bad apple spoils the basket, one, I, one bad idea spoils the other ideas in a brain, and he, he upended his idea basket and re-examined his ideas before placing them back in his 
idea basket. And I think this is what we should do with our, our presuppositions, with the uh, axioms that we assume, like, like we had talked about with logic and reason. We can test them, and in testing them, we can find out that they're not perfect. And we, we know this because we test them. That's why we know, for example, that induction isn't as good as deduction, uh, etc. But in regard to um, morality being objective, my, my problem with people saying that is, to me, and this is probably going to be the point of contention for, okay. for us, okay. is I would define objective as being true or existing independent of minds causing or interpreting it. I, and I, agree. I would define subjective as being dependent on minds causing or interpreting it. So if, if the morality or immorality is dependent on suffering or on uh, pleasure or flourishing, then I, I don't see getting there without the realm of subjectivity being um, involved. Jo Josh, help me out. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm seeing I'm seeing Shane, Shane really well as it seems like he's giving the usage and the definition, not necessarily the same thing, of objective morality to the religious. Am I crazy here? No, uh, you're not crazy. However, I, I don't I don't know if that's that's what um our, what our friend here is saying. Uh, first off, I think that's really well put. Uh, I've got a damn it grad degree in philosophy and I, I'm like shit why am I here uh, you've already got somebody who's uh, wicked articulate mm -hmm. but uh, I think something worth uh, noting is and, and I think Shane might agree but I certainly think this that if uh, you know the earth explodes every human being dies for whatever reason uh, morality as we know it and in think about it, I I think that it just disappears you know the ethics is a conversation about the good, competing yes. conceptions of the good. Um, and I mean, it's not. I, I don't think of it as a moral science, uh, the way physics is an actual science. But yeah, all the human beings die; uh, it goes away. And and I don't think that the religious have a. You know, the only folks who get to say there's an objective uh, morality. However, I really think a lot of this just hinges on that fact that that just that idea: every human being dies, uh, morality, ethics disappears. And let uh, me, can I just add one thing to make that sound a little less depressing to the people who disagree with <laughs> us? Because a lot of people think that that's more depressing than it is, I think. I'm um, an incredibly hopeful person, but yes, I always find that you have to be really brute and upfront there. I used mm -hmm. to be a pastor, so I'm kind of jaded, yeah. but uh, so I'm sorry if that, that sounds I add, depressing. There's I a lot of beautiful, you. happy stuff that goes with that, but... Um, yeah, because yeah. I, I would agree with you that like once we all die, morality stops existing, but let's let's all remember that until we die, it exists as we experience it. So um, people, you know, our subjective, like morality, like everything that morality is ends when we all die. But, you know, until we all die, we still have our same reasons for being moral. Absolutely. And I would, um, if I can, if I can kind of uh, bring up a little just uh, pastoral rhetoric, uh, I would say, you know, first off, I do not consider myself anything appro approaching a moral uh, example uh, or a good moral example, rather. You're a horrible um, person, Josh. I uh, well, yeah. I mean, I, I was, <laughs> I was just a kidding. pastor. I think uh, he's like, oh yeah. <laughs> you know, shit got really bad and fucked up there for a while, and um, I still think that it's it is kind of it's almost ironic that you know someone like myself would be having this conversation, but I think it's a worthy thing to contemplate because. Um, I think it's the sort of thing that it has the potential to really improve your life. Um, as I was working through some really fucked up issues and uh, just some really dark shit in my life, you know, uh, arrest, rehab, uh, free rehabs, which are just terrible, um, and trying to rebuild my life, uh, I had to rethink how I treat other people, how I treat myself, the kind of person I want to be. I think ethics is probably one of the most important conversations you're going to have. And... All that being said, uh, I had to cut through a lot of horseshit. I used to think for a long time I was going to think my way into a better life, and really a, a big part of that's action. But I, I think that some of the best thinking we do on this is it's all subjective. It's it's something. It's a process we do, well, and Josh, I just don't think uh, those rules are out there in, in any sort of objective sense. Right. right. I think we it's, reflect it's on it. Not written in you know, some... something like suffering is an excellent reason to not want to rape or hurt somebody. You don't have that's not going to be the end all be all <laughs> best morality, but it's a damn good place to start. I would say, you know, is what you're doing causing suffering? Right. Is that right. suffering worth 
the good that comes with what you do. And I think that's a good enough reason to not murder, to not rape, to not mistreat people. Okay, uh, but let me yourself. I think that's a good start. Fair enough. And, fair uh, enough. Let me let me ask so you think, this. Let me ask so you. So yeah, this. I think that this is putting all that in context. Uh, this is a subjective experience. It's part of being a human. At, at no point do I think there's anything like the way we study physics in okay. this. Josh, you know? Josh, uh, I got I got to ask this question, sir. Um, a moment ago, I accused Shane of giving the the referee stripes and and powers over to the religious, and now I'm going to sound a little religious myself, and I hate to do it, but if it's all just subjective, how do you get to say that something's actually wrong? Why is if if, if you guys are I know you've heard this one. It's it's oh yeah, you no, heard it a million times, but but I think it's fair because I have an answer for this question when the two. the Perfect. Christian apologist challenges me. Right, you I don't know that you do, but if you do, I would like to hear it. How can you condemn the serial murderer for his crimes if morality is subjective? Anyone answer? So, first of all, um, I, I want to definitely answer your question, but um, I want to make sure that you understand that there's a huge distinction between subjectivism and relativism. Are you familiar with the distinction? I preach it. I understand that they are not the same thing, but I think they're very synonymous. Okay, no, they're, they're not. And one of the main reasons why they're not is that relativism falls under moral realism. So a, relati a relativist would say that it could be like right for me to kill someone, but then wrong for you because, oh, it's just your own subjective opinion. And well, if I it's feel just like your every opinion. time I explain to someone that I'm moral, a moral subjectivist, they think of moral relativism, and that's the problem that they have with my morality, and, and that's not what I'm saying. So I think that we could call the Holocaust wrong even if uh, the Nazis won, and I think that I could call... Uh, How? female genital mutilation wrong even though it's normal in another culture and I can justify that by saying that since we have a goal of promoting the most human flourishing possible and minimizing suffering if I say what you're doing is wrong what I'm saying is that it is the wrong way to promote human flourishing and that's objective morality well one of the common criticisms that we seem to see with um, from objectivists and it, it correct me if I'm wrong it seemed like you were going there because you didn't necessarily say this but it seems like people seem to say, well, why should somebody care as if, like, why would I be able to talk someone out of it? And if someone's a, a type of person who's going to rape or kill, uh, whether you believe in objective or subjective morality, you're probably not going to just philosophically talk them out of it. Right, but, right. you know, if somebody says... Uh, I'm, like, I'm losing my goddamn mind, about, Shane. I'm losing my uh, fucking mind. I, I want to let you finish. I just want you to know I'm going crazy right now. Please continue. Okay, well, before you go crazy... <laughs> well, now, I didn't mean to let you interrupt. <laughs> oh, well, well, you fucked up. Uh, <laughs> Fair. I, I, think, I think it's important to note that, yeah, there, there's a huge difference between relativism and subjectivity. What we're talking about is the method we are using to arrive at these beliefs uh, requires reflection. It requires uh, a, a large amount of induction, a large amount of thinking that is just not objective thinking it, it, it the process is very different than you know like microbiology right or right. physics and i think that's really just all that needs that that's the big thing here where there's not a huge difference between what i think you and myself believe it is just the way i think that we arrive at you know truths moral truths okay uh, what was okay hold on hold on but before you continue and I'm I'm acting like a total ass because I keep interrupting you guys. And I'm sorry, but it it's like it's like you fucking atheists piss me off more than the religious people because I actually oh, I pity them. You know, like I see them in the same way I see like a a, a stupid MAGA person. You know, where I'm just like, oh, <laughs> you're just getting duped by your fucking savior, whether he was on a cross or running for president. It's the same thing. You're just stupid. You know, like I really do actually look down on <laughs> them, I, and I, that's it, horrible. Yeah, no, it's equally frustrating. Um like for subjectivists to watch so like when i watched you debate about morality it it seemed like from my perspective i was watching two people claim that they had a justification for objective morality neither of them really justifying their morality being objective and existing ontologically and, and then both of them criticizing the other person for not being able to do that you, you cut so me you cut like me deep there could, shane you cut me deep just if now. we if we could just Accept and admit that we make the assumption that we ought to survive and that we ought to promote flourishing, then it, it's fine. Like, we just admit that we make a subjective assumption. And then, if we argue with somebody about something like 
slavery. Because obviously people have not always thought slavery was wrong. Well, if I was arguing with somebody about slavery and I was saying it's wrong, somebody goes, well, what ground do you have to say that slavery is wrong? Like, if you're a subjectivist, isn't it just your opinion? Right. Say, no, but it's an opinion based on values and goals that you share as a member of this social species. Like, it is pretty much like saying if you knew what I knew, not if you had the same values that I have. If you knew the facts about the world that I know, you would understand that what I'm saying is the better way to achieve the goal that we share. So if I say that uh, slavery is wrong, or if I say that making same-sex marriage illegal is wrong, what I'm saying is, based on our goal of promoting flourishing, if you knew what I knew, you would understand that what you're doing is the wrong way to promote well, the most flourishing and me, minimize suffering. Let me, let me ask you this. Yeah. If you're going to say that morality is subjective, and I'm not going to go to the relativist thing, but if you're going to say it's subjective, and you say that you having more knowledge leads you to a clearer understanding of that which is more moral, and let's say me in this, in this scenario, I have less knowledge, and if I knew what you knew, I would then understand what you understand about what is more moral in this situation, specifically slavery. I'm in the 1700s. You're in 2021, right? Um, mm -hmm. Yes, you have more knowledge, but if morality is subjective, then just because you have more knowledge doesn't mean you're right, because I have more knowledge than the caveman, even though I'm from the 1700s. That didn't make me right about slavery. Well, right, but it, it makes me more likely to be right. And, I, and I've given this analogy. So it's probability. Previously. So put it, put it, let's look at it like this. Here's a really good analogy that I think might help you understand where I'm coming from. If you and I both have this goal of getting to work, just hypothetically, we're roommates and we work at the same place. And we both share this goal, getting to work in the fastest way possible, making as few stops as possible. Mm-hmm. And you're telling me the highway is the fastest way to get to work. I say, you're wrong. Because I'm aware of this accident on the highway. And I'm aware of the fact that if you get on the highway, it's actually going to slow down the process of this goal of making it to work as fast as we can. Right. So it, when I say, you're wrong to get on the highway, like, yeah, you might not understand why you're wrong because you don't have the same awareness that I have. And this could be analogous to, like, if I understand why slavery is wrong and you don't, sure, you might not understand why you're wrong. But, it, like, this is why I, I think we need to start with working on this framework, getting people to acknowledge that flourish, that they benefit from the flourishing of their own species. And, and then just simply trying to promote that goal. I think you're living a moral lifestyle. Okay. If... There is not a sense of objective morality, therefore a standard that exists beyond ourself. Then what is it that you subjectively are appealing to? Because ourselves, like our experience. If you're if appealing to yourself, is that's bad, relativism. Then why not minimize it? And why is the standard have to just be objective? There could be subjective standards, not just between one own person's yeah, uh, you know, thoughts. I mean, this happens in families, groups, societies, uh, sometimes horribly, sometimes uh, really well. Uh, I think that's also another thing to I mean, it's not like there's no such thing as standards. That's why I keep, you know, uh, I, there's no such thing Shane as standards articulating this excellently. Uh, and I have <laughs> I'm kind of, you know, I'm rusty with the academia thing. I, I don't care as much. I, I'm not saying that anybody else here does, but like I, I just find it's it's simple enough to you know. I'm actually kind of dumb. Uh, you're <laughs> you're actually you're you're more qualified but, um, than than either of the other <laughs> than either of us. But <laughs> maybe, but um, all, all no, but all that to say, uh, I, I really think this is just kind of a small, this is a smaller linguistic issue more than anything, because yeah, there's still standards. Like this has nothing to do with whether or not there, it really is wrong to murder or rape or that there aren't standards or that we can't hold people responsible or, or we can't hold people, you know, th this is a conversation that uh, it doesn't fall apart uh, just because it's subjective. Uh, we're just talking about the way we arrive at these uh, the conclusions. That's an important thing to note. You know, what are you uh, appealing to? Not very relevant to to everyday life, but I think um, his his insight about subjectivity is one of the few things that's a real good contribution here. That Josh, uh, Josh, yeah. What are you appealing yeah, to? 
Shane, what are you appealing to when you say it's right or wrong? If it's just subjective, you're just appealing to your own opinion. There has no, to be not, something not else. I'm, I'm, I'm also what I'm appealing to is the experience of suffering as being bad and the experience of flourishing as being good. And that's it. it. It's almost like if you were if I was on fire and you were to ask me like, OK, but what are you appealing to? to say that that's bad? <laughs> like, I don't really need to philosophically <laughs> justify the fact that I experience fire is bad. It's an axiomatic fact that suffering is bad to me. So right. if you and I are in my apartment and my apartment's on fire, it is the case that we will die if we stay in the apartment. It is the case that if we get out of the apartment, we will survive. But if we don't have a subjective assumption, then that's it. You, you, you would just describe, if we're talking about objectivity, you describe the fact that we will die and you stop there. But when mm. you have the subjective assumption, which for biological evolutionary reasons, as you explained earlier, we have, if we're in my apartment and it's on fire, we're going to get out because it is objectively the case that getting out of the apartment is the right way to survive. And you and I assume that we ought to survive. Yes. So, like, you That's will be what I'm saying, here, Robert. If you just if you just admit that you assume that you have to survive, it, it yes. will be really liberating. Yes, that's 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 literally what I'm saying. Is I'm right. I'm, I'm so saying, I, but I'm not discounting subjective morality. I said that in the beginning. I think there's many forms of morality. One of them is subjective. Obviously, I I feel like it's wrong for my daughter to destroy the guest bathroom every goddamn <laughs> time she uses it. I don't think it's fair to the rest of the because family. It causes a form of suffering to you, not right. suffering. But she in the doesn't. Sense of like she doesn't pain. think it's wrong. She thinks I'm just a male oppressor because I made her read way too much Mary Wollstonecraft <laughs> growing up, and she's a <laughs> feminist now. But 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 yeah, I I do agree it's subjective morality, but I it doesn't mean that just because I say there is objective, there's no subjective. If that was the implication. But the objective well, no, but, that I'm talking uh, about is what you're yeah, calling Robert, subjective. You're just calling no, but, it like we all agree it's subjective. That's subjective. No, it's not, Robert. No, it's not. Consensus does not give you truth. If everyone in the world thought that blue was the best color, that would not make it an objective fact. It's a form of it's color. a form of objective. I, I agree with you. It's a form. No, it's but not. There, there's you're, another. I think you're conflating objective with universal. But like, there's I another think that one. Morality can right. be subjective but universal. But if but, then let's look at the definitions that like I proposed earlier and see if it's that that you disagree with. If objective is existing or true, independent of minds causing or interpreting it, and subjective is dependent on minds causing or interpreting it, and immorality is dependent on suffering and pleasure, which are dependent on minds causing them, how do we say that morality is objective? when we cannot talk about an immoral action without involving minds causing or interpreting something. If ah. you could present me with an example of an immoral action that involved no consciousness whatsoever, I would concede my point. Like one immoral action that doesn't involve any suffering or pleasure. And, uh, and I concede I'm wrong. That's it. What you're offering Ooh. as what would make you concede that you're wrong didn't necessarily align with your... It, it did with, because with your whole, with your whole and flourishing... Are dependent on minds causing or interpreting them, uh, and it would it would be right or wrong, uh, morally speaking, in terms of suffering or flourishing, whether humans existed or not. If we consider that someone getting bashed in the face with a rock would be immoral, because when you say immoral, you are referring to conscious beings. So when you ask the question, show me an example where a conscious being isn't having his rights violated or isn't uh, being caused unnecessary suffering, and then I'll agree with you. Well, no, that actually goes against the entire term of morality. The very understanding of morality is That's based on conscious it, beings. Is it because it's subjective, you can't give me an example that doesn't involve but you you experience these things subjectively, but there's an no, but objective understanding of what people will experience or or conscious no, but beings. You, but no, but you and I experience math subjectively, but I wouldn't call math subjective. But that's because our experience of it being subjective doesn't mean that the variables of it are too. In the case of morality, morality a as a whole is dependent on subjective variables and. You know, um, as to where with my morality, all truth is having one objective truth involved in a moral statement 
doesn't mean that therefore the morality is objective but it that does work the other way around because once you involve subjectivity you don't arrive at something objective no because because i could say uh, i could i could give you the problem two plus two parentheses for parentheses equals what and you might say well i want to multiply first or i want to add first right there's a correct there's a correct way to do this right objectively but but subjectively, we might disagree. Right, but that's just one of us being wrong. Um, right, and that's how morality works. In the same way, you and I both have a subjective opinion about kicking a cat in the foot. I want to use something better than kicking a cat. Something we might disagree about. Right, I don't but know. It's, it's the suffering. That jo- makes Josh doesn't wrong. like spraying cats with water in the face. I would love to spray you a cat with water. Just I, say I would do it. Violence against children, and, and I don't mean like anything disciplinary. If you're if you're like okay with spanking. Uh, fine, I'm not gonna argue that, but but you know, violence towards children. Yeah, yeah. I I, I would I would awesome. say that up to uh, a certain point in elementary school, spanking without like actually causing physical harm, but like a little diaper pat or like a little a little leg kind of thing, you know, not actually hurting them, not where you're like you're stinging your hand. I would say that's totally understandable from from somebody that that's gone through the parenting thing. I don't know how the hell I would have pulled that off without giving a couple swats on a, on a leg. But somebody might say, hey, that's using violence. You're violating their nap. You know, you're, you're, vi- you're the non-aggression principle, right? You're, you're vi- <laughs> trying to get them to take a nap. But you know what I mean? But, but yeah, that's a perfect example. There is a truth that exists, and that's what we are referring to whenever we say, is it right or wrong? Well, you have your opinion. I have my opinion. There is a right or wrong. There is actually that which is best for that child. If there wasn't, what the hell are we talking about? Yeah. Okay. So let's go with that. What I think what you're saying here and what we are all agree on, because this can get into like minutia, which I really just don't care about. Let, let, let's. What about this? Um, child harm. Uh, it, it's awful. And the way yeah, we arrive yeah, at that being wrong is, I think that whole process is just is something that it, we it's there's a feeling component, there's an experiencing component. The most important aspect is your subjective experience. What are you going to do? Like the, one of the deep questions you ask in ethics is, can I live with this? Um, and when you see something that's just so reprehensible that you have to act, I, I think the deepest most important part about the discussion of morality is what am I going to do? And that's that's a subjective thing. What you're doing, what you're deciding to do, that's the most important thing. That is the most relevant thing. That is that is all subjectivity. Your decisions, what you're choosing to do with your life, how you're comporting yourself, how uh, you're engaging with others as well. And that to me, I mean, we just keep going in this like word circle uh, not not that I'm insulting anyone. Or, right, 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 right. It's, you know, that's a subjective thing. Right. It really is wrong to do certain things. Rape really is wrong. I think murder it really is wrong. Part of that is because is I'm... Is that just your opinion, or is it really wrong? Yeah, I think so, yes. Is it just your oh, opinion? Suffering. I, Josh, and, and I, Josh, I just think is it your opinion is wrong, that, or is it wrong? I feel both. I, and that, right, and I do too. Very no. important. To say I do too. I was going to attack saying, "Oh, you're talking about feelings." I got the word of God. Uh, what I'm very <laughs> hold on. No, I think Robert's is... misunderstanding something that I that I'm noticing about what you're saying. Okay. So, okay. Okay. So, it, it, and this example, I think I started to give earlier, and it, and it explained it earlier. But um, I'm going to try this again. So, if I'm arguing with somebody about gay marriage, and I'm the person who says that same-sex couples should be allowed to get married, that person says that gay marriage is wrong. And that person thinks that since it's wrong, they shouldn't be allowed to get married. If you really break down anyone's reason for thinking why something's wrong, you will find that they think it's because it minimizes or is not the correct way to promote the most flourishing for society. So if I'm arguing with someone about um, gay marriage, it one of us is right about which one of our um, ideas what you know legalizing gay marriage or not one of us is right about what promotes more flourishing so if we understand that that's our goal then we could at least you know there's an objective criteria involved in figuring that out but we have a subjective starting point and i don't see it arriving at calling something immoral without a subjective starting point i agree i agree absolutely but that's that's not our point of contention 
our point of contention, and, and just just to clarify, I'm sure you didn't mean this. It's not necessarily that one of you is right. One of you might be closer to being right, but but either way, uh, but toward uh, maximizing human flourishing, you could both be wrong. But but still, there is a standard to which we are trying to achieve, and I don't know what you would call that if you say objective morality is non-existent. I mean, subjective but universal. Ugh, no, it's more than universal. If you mean universal in the sense that we all kind of have a, a majority agreement on it, it's more than that. It's definitely not universal in the sense of, like, the physical universe. But there is something that is the best way, and we are trying to get there. This isn't... Uh, uh, so is that like a God's eye view you have there, Robert? No, uh, that, no, the it is not even, it's not even Plato's theory of forms. And it's it's definitely not a, a divine command theory. Yeah, it's I just saying that. like we're we're going we're tr- when I say, man, I really I, I wish I would have done a better job on that. You know, I wish I would have handled that better. I wish I, I I regret doing it. I'm appealing to there being a potential that I could have done something different. Which I'm I'm guessing the three of us are determinists or at least compatibilists. I'll accept either. But I'm just saying whether we could have or not have done something different, we're appealing to a different thing being better. And that's not just a, a subjective understanding because subjectively we did a, yeah, it we're is. appealing Everything to an objective B. Subjective, though. Right. Like that better, good, th- like those proclivities that humans have for those properties are completely based on human subjective desire. And I would say that that's the desire for pleasure. Sure, but we're trying to move from that, and that's what morality is. We're trying to take sure, yourself but, out but of that just, picture. It seems like we haven't really escaped the issue that Josh brought up earlier, where it seems like you're conflating there not being an objective standard with there not being a standard. It, it's like, why is it an issue if there is a subjective standard that we share, and then anything that we argue about, whether it's moral or immoral, we're arguing over whether or not it comports better to that standard, that can still be done with a subjective standard. But if, if there's a standard that you all subjectively share and you're all wrong, or, or how about this? Let me ask it this way. And that happens. Let me, let me ask, let, 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 me, let me rephrase it. If there is a standard that you all subjectively share, how could you be wrong morally? If that's the extent of morality. Well, if everyone thinks that something promotes the most flourishing and it is not the case that the thing that they think does does then they're all wrong how could they be wrong if there is nothing objectively wrong about it because it again what what, what is defining the because wrong because they think x promotes the most human flourishing and it is objectively the case that x does not promote the most human flourishing they could be wrong wait 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 it. When you, they're wrong in respect to a shared goal. Okay, okay, okay. When you say it is not the case that X promotes that which is, how did you say it? The the uh, maybe if I didn't and interrupt you, I'd hear you better. But flourishing. X doesn't promote the most flourishing. What's that? What the fuck is that? That's subjective morality. No, that's subjective morality. Flourishing? No, because you subjectively got it wrong. You just said we all failed on it, but we were wrong about what that which in the scenario X doesn't promote the most human flourishing. What's that thing? They were it was objectively wrong in respect to their subjective goal. Boom! And That's it. That's all I'm promoting. In respect to their subjective goal, you're starting with the same subjective frame or I'm sorry, ground that I'm starting with and then going, "Okay, like again, like this seems like we agree that there are objectively it's like, okay, this is objectively not the way to promote the most yeah, flourishing. that's all it is. But everyone thinks so, and they could be wrong. But they're wrong in respect to their own their subjective goals of yeah, promoting okay. flourishing. But that's all it is. So, so we agree. Objective morality it, exists, even even if you're going to refer to it in a conceptual no, thing. It, uh, I, but I, it, 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 but it, that doesn't mean it exists. Because, Robert, let me ask. Why ought we do that which is good as a matter of objective fact? Why ought we survive? Because I'm, I'm fine with assuming it, but like, the why words do those good and ought imply moral standards. You can't even use those words in any way. Like, even if you were to, the, to ask me that question and I didn't standard. understand that those words were, were in respect to ethics, I wouldn't understand your question. So, so the very, are, the very words morals. mean morals. I'm sorry, what was okay. the last thing you said, Robert? I said those very words mean morals. Those very things are referencing the topic of morality and ethics. Right, like what we ought to do and what we ought not do. 
but ought is prescriptive. It's it's not like I don't see any descriptive ought. Right. It doesn't it doesn't exist in the sense of after the entire universe falls apart like Josh was talking about. It really doesn't so fucking morality matter. Morality is based on oughts, and oughts can't be descriptive. Why would morality be a descriptive thing? In the sense of that which is best for human flourishing or limiting unnecessary suffering or maximizing happiness, you then have a descriptor because there are things that will lead to that. And if you're talking about morality being something other than that, then full circle, I think you're giving the the referee shirts over the religious people that say that it's something cosmic or ethereal or beyond us. And we, the three of us don't agree with that at all. Okay. So I think what the three of us agree on is a subjective starting point, an objective criteria in relation to the subjective starting point, and then Josh and I are subjective in our conclusion because subjectivity is involved in the theory. Uh, but for you, you're just looking at the fact that there's objectivity in the criteria, yes. and you're, you're kind of concluding that therefore it's objective. Yeah, I'm saying that is one form. And at the end of the day, I don't think we're actually disagreeing that much. I, I think just that part that you use to say whether you're subjectively right or wrong, I'm defining that as objective morality. But what I fear you think I was defining as objective morality, I wasn't actually going that far. I'm, I honestly think we all, in the end, agree. I, I think it's semantics. Yeah, right. But the reason why I said earlier, so like, if you were to take a theory of morality and say here is some objective criteria so in other words here is a premise involved in it that is objective and you were to say that therefore morality is objective that's a composition fallacy yes as to where doing the same thing with subjectivity isn't and yes. the reason why it isn't doing that with subjectivity is subjective is dependent on minds causing or interpreting it which means even if only one premise is subjective then so too would be the conclusion. But I, I agree uh, that the only way we can interpret morality is subjectively. And okay. if I said there is an objective standard, that's also a subjective fucking opinion. I, I agree with you 100%, so man. It, here, here's what I think. What you're proposing is not objective morality. It's moral subjectivism with extra steps. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you said it. I've got a question, Robert. And yes, it's, I think it just kind of will, you know, kind of clear any, you kind of get past some of the maybe semantic issues we have. Um, and, and this isn't exactly your opinion, but I'm just curious, uh, as far as objective moral truths go, you know, we, we've used the word ontological before, but like, in what way does that exist? And, and where does that exist exactly? In, uh, in and, the same place you know, numbers do. As you think. Like in, in the same, you? yeah, like in the same place numbers exist or the laws of logic exist, there is a truth that would say, if I wanted to limit suffering, ultimately, I could Lex Luthor style blow up the world. I, I mean, I could, but you know, hypothetically, would that be what's best morally or not? Well, there is a truth. The, the only way that I could even ask that question is if there was actually something that I'm appealing to as a moral truth. And I would say that's objective morality. And that, that exists in the same place as the laws of logic, uh, in the same place as 2 plus 2 equals 4. Where is that? Hell if I know, man. But I know that those things exist. You know they exist. Um, might I ask how you know that? Based on my own subjective experience. <laughs> okay, cool. Okay. Um, well, uh, welcome to our camp. Uh, <laughs> uh, and yeah, and I think that it's almost it's almost a point that you know it's it's not it's kind of a distinction without any difference uh, because yeah the we're essentially saying the same thing here. Welcome uh, to our camp. And, and now we can begin to have a proper discussion of what the good is, what the good life is. <laughs> Fair enough. Guys, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Everybody, look into Shane at Shane the Skeptic. That's on YouTube. You can find him on Facebook. Also on Facebook is uh, my friend Josh Richards. Uh, he can help you out with website management, guys. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed this. You made me so angry. But I'm okay. You'll be all right. I'll be fine. I'll God be bless. Fine. Thank you to Shane and Josh. Thank you to Dave Blair at DaveBlairMusic.com. Thank you to Feedspot.com 
for promoting the right to reason to the top 10 atheist podcast. Thank you to our patrons, Jason Parker, Freethinker215, Alan Marks, Philip Spawn, Bernard, Lamberell, Anima Man, Larry Wilson, and our top supporter, Rob Montgomery. You can support this broadcast at patreon.com forward slash right. And learn more at the right to reason.com. Next week, I'm debating a highly educated German theologian about whether one's own personal experience is justification for the belief in the divine. Between now and then, remember that you have the right to reason. Podcast. 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 Podcast.